the composer settings are actually divided up into four different tabs so i've got a window edit fast forward rewind and a multicam tab so we've got first row of info which by default is selected and that means it's going to display one row of time code information above both these monitors here and that's probably the most common configuration. I can also display a second row of info which will actually show me a second row of information uh, or if I choose I can just choose no time code information up there at all and a lot of users like to display it that way just a little less cluttered. But if I choose the second row of info, and I'll just show you what that looks like, it will then display those two rows of time code information above those monitors. Center duration, this is a really, really nice feature, and I've got this on all the time. If I turn that on, just watch what happens in this area just up here. I'll hit OK, and I'll get this little field. It will actually show me a duration. So if I mark an in point there and say an out point here, you can see that it's now showing me 2 seconds and 17 frames, meaning that there's actually 2 seconds and 17 frames between those marks. Over here on the record side, if I just mark an in point there and mark an out point over here, it's now showing me 7 seconds and 13 frames. So it's measuring the distance between the marks in whichever monitor happens to be active. 16 by 9 monitors means that I can actually display these monitors here, uh, which are by default 4 by 3, in a 16 by 9 configuration. Obviously very useful to show the correct aspect ratio for standard definition material shot in 16 by 9. Also essential for work in high definition where the native aspect ratio of high def is actually 16 by 9. In fact, it's so commonly used, they also give you a little option here, 16 by 9 video selection straight in the contextual menu without actually having to go to composer settings to turn that on or off. First row of buttons, as the name suggests, gives me the very first row of buttons underneath these monitors here. And I do also have the option to display a second row of buttons. So I can actually have two rows of buttons under both monitors. Because this is an option, I can actually turn off all the buttons if I want. Many users who are very strong keyboard users tend not to have buttons under the monitors because they really are driving everything from the keyboard. Finally, I have uh, tick marks in position bars. Now what that enables and disables are these little markers just along here in the position bars. They don't actually denote specific durations, but they're just little reference points that you might want to display along those bars or not. Now in the Edit tab, I've got a number of options. Color framing here, not that relevant to us these days if you're finishing in the Avid, uh, more relevant to jobs where you're actually going to online tape. Doesn't happen that often anymore, so I'm not really going to look at that. And also sync point editing, not really going to have a look at that either. Uh, but certainly single mark editing. Uh, what single mark editing allows me to do, if I just turn that on and I hit OK, it allows me to, with one single mark, perform a three-point edit. So let's say I've got my shot here of my purple flower and I want to start at that frame. Now I won't mark a point there but I will park there. And over here in my timeline I want it to actually end here but I want it to start back here. So I've only marked one point. If I now do an overwrite, it will only overwrite the flower into that little section just there. So it means I don't have to mark three points, I can actually get away with just marking one point. Now Phantom Marks are just references for you. If I turn this on and I hit OK, you'll notice straight away that I've got these dark blue in and out marks under here and I've got a dark blue in mark underneath this monitor here. That shows me how much material relative to the entire clip I'm about to overwrite into this section here. So if I'd had say an in point here and an out point there, it would then show me, OK, well if you use this as your first frame, this is going to be your last frame. And I can actually use my go to out or my W key to go to the last frame of that edit. So if I'm a bit curious as to, well, if, if this is my first frame, I wonder what my last frame is going to be. I can use my go to out and that will show me the last frame that's going to appear in the edit based on this duration that I've got marked in the timeline. So as reference points, the phantom marks are actually quite useful. In fact, the system also gives you a show phantom marks option here in that contextual menu, which you can just turn on and off uh, without having to go back to the actual composer settings. So I'll go back to composer settings. Auto create new tracks. This is actually uh, quite a nice one. I've got over here in my bin a four track audio clip. Now you can see down here in my timeline how I've only got video audio one and audio two. If I decided to overwrite this audio into this section here, the system will automatically create audio 3 and audio 4 for me. 
because uh, it's seen that I actually didn't have those tracks and it knows that I need them so it actually just creates those tracks automatically for me and that's actually quite uh, quite a handy little feature that one auto enable source tracks uh, if I just go back to my little four track audio clip again and I decide well I'm going to turn off audio one and audio three if I choose a different track and then I go back to my four track audio clip. You can see here that audio one and audio three have been automatically enabled. Uh, so the system will automatically enable all the source tracks in your source clip, uh, even if they were turned off previously. Copy source locators. What I've got here is I've got a locator in this uh, little section and I've decided to overwrite that into my timeline just there. Okay, and I'll just uh, type a little bit of rubbish in there. That's all good. I'll hit OK, enable all my uh, tracks over here again. Now what I've got is I've got a locator here between my in and out marks. And if I were to use that section in my timeline, you can see how that locator actually comes across with the source material. Now that's OK, but it's not always appropriate to bring source locators over into the sequence. So what we can do here within the composer settings is to say, oh, OK, don't worry about bringing source locators across into the timeline. The next option is actually something that I think should just be on all the time. Uh, it's undo only record events. Uh, you're probably aware that you do get an undo redo list of uh, 32 operations. Now that remembers everything, including anything that you do in the source monitor. So for example, uh, what I've done over here is I've placed a locator and I've got an in point and an out point. Now if I were to start undoing, that would constitute three undos. Now, the reality is that the most important part of this whole process is what you're actually building in the sequence. So it's much more advantageous to have the ability to undo only those events and forget about these unimportant source events. So if I click that and I hit OK, if I just remove those marks, you'll see that undo here is not undo remove marks. It's actually undo overwrite, which is the last thing that I did in the timeline. So uh, for my money, that's probably the only way to fly. Back here in Composer Settings, I have a Fast Forward and Rewind tab. So the default option here is for the system to just stop at head frames, and you've probably been using that already. Uh, but it is contingent upon which tracks were active at the time. So let me just show you. I'll just hit OK, and I'll go and enable Audio 1 and Audio 2. Now if I fast forward, you would hope that the position indicator would stop at this cut point there but it actually goes down to the next available cut point that is shared by all of the active tracks. The reason it doesn't stop here is because there's no corresponding cut point on audio 1 and 2. It also can't use this cut point here because there's no corresponding cut point on the video and so forth. So it actually ends up right at the very end of the sequence. Now that's not always practical. So down here on the composer settings I've got an option here called ignore track selectors. So in this instance, the system will then just simply go to the next available cut point regardless of which track or which tracks were active at the time. Now, if you don't want to have to go and turn that on in the composer settings, what you can do is I'll just turn that off there. If I hold down the Alt key and I go fast forward and rewind, well, that will then go to the next cut point again regardless of which tracks happen to be active in the timeline at the time. So that's actually quite handy. We do like that one. So I'll go back to composer settings. Uh, other options I've got here is the ability to stop at tail frames rather than a head frame. I can also stop at locators. So if I decide that I just want to go to my locators, uh, I can just do that instead and have it just ignore my cut points. And again, of course, I can choose the ignore track selections option. So a lot of really cool tips that you can actually use to customize your own composer settings. Okay, what you've seen today are just some of the things we actually cover in the MC101 editing with Avid Media Composer and MC201 Advanced Media Composer Tips and Techniques courses. You can get a lot more information about the courses that we offer on our website, which is www.avap.com.au. Well, that's the end of episode two. We really hope that you're enjoying these podcasts and that you're getting a lot out of them. But if you have any comments at all, we're always looking for your feedback. Please drop us a line at dforsyth at ambertech.com.au and if you've got any ideas about something that you'd like to see covered in a future episode we'd love to hear about that too but until then cheers for now